new cinematics are out and while they may seem very straightforward at first glance they're definitely foreshadowing some really really interesting things the world soul whispers that Andrew and troll here may not be the world soul itself and in fact maybe something a lot more sinister manipulating us all Sergenas definitely knew something that we didn't the sword was more than just trying to stab Azeroth and most importantly it appears like a fully fledged Naru has been living inside Azeroth for a while. Light humans were drawn to this place all the way from the Eastern Kingdoms. Was this a site of an unknown light invasion of Azeroth that the Titans wanted to hide? Or was this where the Naru were flung in the original ordering of the universe? Let's cover the most interesting bits of the War Within cinematics as all of this seems like amazing potential for what is to come to Warcraft. As gamers, you're also most certain to gadgets, and that is exactly why I'm excited to talk about this video sponsor, Gadget Discovery Club. Now, they can actually send me two of these boxes, and there's so much more than I can expect. In one of them, I got this wireless vendor that is wireless, of course, super easy to use, super easy to clean. They have also sent me these earbuds, as well as this tiny little Bluetooth speaker that has amazing sound. Now, you may be wondering, like, what exactly is this club? Essentially, you subscribe, you get quarterly themed boxes with gadgets, and Best of all, they're not going to be super cheap stuff. There's always going to be something useful and they're always going to be worth at least $125. You can pay annually, you can pay quarterly, but best of all, this could be a perfect gift, especially now for the holiday season, as you can give someone that is really into gadgets this box and they're going to receive a whole bunch of really interesting things. So it has never been a better time to join the Gadget Discovery Club. Click the link in the description and use code Orange Movies to get 20% off your order or your gift. So make sure to click my link in the description below. So, by this point in time, all of you have almost certainly listened to the BlizzCon panels, read all the info, the compilations, I don't really wanna compile the features, you know, pair the same stuff you can read anywhere that you have heard already. I want to dig into the meat of the lore to take a few gems from the recent cinematics, some that have gone unnoticed, some that the community has been heavily discussing, and I really want to dissect it and explain it as best as we can, at least with the current amount of information. Now, the War Within cinematic, the CGI and the trailer are not particularly mysterious inherently. I mean, they seem very straightforward on first glance. It is just Anduin and Troll talking with the sword in the background. A lot of people have said it is even boring. It's just two guys talking. And of course, we got the trailer showing the new zones. But as always, things may not be as they seem. Starting off with a cinematic, we have, of course, Grizzled Anduin that has not actually been aged. The initial speculation based on that comic that we got back in Legion was that he would be an old man, but that is in the ultimate Light vs. Void invasion, so there is still time for that, but he obviously seems to have been broken. Anduin experiencing PTSD from the Jailer is like an experience all of us share, but the big thing though is that he is now getting the whispers that callings like most of the denizens of Azeroth. First questions you may have is like, where has Anduin actually been? I mean, has the guy just been hiding in the Nerys this entire time and we couldn't figure it out? I mean, like five years have passed since all those events? The answer at the moment is we don't really know fully. It is likely that he has traveled outside of Azeroth. We know that Gen has sighted him on Azeroth, but he almost certainly returned here, particularly as the voices were probably stronger around the sword that he he also started getting stronger visions of what is to come. The dialogue itself is pretty straightforward, but the big mystery everyone has been talking about right now is the voice. Why are Troll and Anduin wondering what this voice is? Why are they confused? Like, was it not common knowledge by this point that the world soul can speak? I mean, everyone literally knows this. I think the real answer to this is that it might not just be Azeroth speaking, and they're definitely being skeptical about it. They know something is going on. If you put the captions on the actual Blizzard cinematic, it literally just says World Soul Whispering, but I think this is way too straightforward for Blizzard to do. It would essentially be like just giving us the whole story. In this cinematic, both Anduin and Troll start wondering what exactly 
was the sword aimed at. That was like the big point of the entire cinematic. With the Azerite crisis, and keep in mind Anduin was in charge at this point in time, they definitely knew about the world soul, so I think they're questioning whether it was really aimed at the world soul or if there is something more sinister brewing under the ground. Of course, that only leaves us to speculations right now, but keep in mind, Zelatat is building a new Black Empire, as Blizzard just said, below the ground, using dead old god blood, so I literally wouldn't be surprised if a void lord is being built there that might manifest in the second expansion, or it, it could have something to do with the first ones. However, it is almost certain that this isn't just the world soul whispering and awakening in the natural process, as you would expect. The reason I say this is the features trailer, where we get Illyria talking about how she isn't getting the same whispers as everyone else is getting, but instead, her whispers are not radiant and she can only hear the shadow. This makes 100% perfect sense, I mean, she's by this point essentially a void being, she's way more fine-tuned to this void stuff. Remember guys, in Dragonfight we got that document how the Harbinger will complete the awakening, in this case, finishing what the Black Empire almost finished in the very ancient past, and we know the goal was to turn the world soul into a being of the void, like a void titan. So it is very likely that is what could be happening, and Alidia is able to sense the void notes from the world soul, the half corrupted speaking. I know it might seem like a crazy or even really not so crazy speculation right now, but guys, we are literally getting a full scale void vision and while midnight, I mean, this actually confirmed this happening, it is absolutely not unheard of that this void invasion comes from within Azeroth, from Zelatet's plan that she is doing in this expansion. That also brings us to the third expansion, the Titans, as you may know, they will do anything, like they would even destroy Azeroth, but they will never let it turn into a being of the void. Anyway, there is a speculation on the overarching storyline of these three expansions, but let's get into my opinion, the most interesting bit we could gotten from this trailer, and that is this mysterious gigantic light crystal just chilling in the sky. When I say sky, I don't mean sky in literal terms, as this is under the ground. So in Hollowfall, the new zone, there is a massive light crystal in the sky that is turning this underground zone to look almost like a normal normal one. Now, first speculation everyone got was that this is the tip of Sergeus' sword, and this is kind of the logical conclusion as the first cinematic emphasized the sword itself, and while I think that could have been cool, I'm almost certain this 100% isn't the case. First off, we can see most of the sword in Silithus, it wouldn't also really work from geographical terms, like it would really have to bend, and the second because the light worshipping humans came here a while ago, and they are particularly attached to this crystal, they built their entire culture around it and the sword thing only happened a few years back. The most realistic and I'm almost certain this is the case is that this is a Naru related thing. Now let me read out a super intriguing chronicle chapter that will shed more light to this matter. The cataclysmic birth of the cosmos also flung shards of light throughout reality. These shards suffused the matter of our riot worlds with a spark of life, giving rise to creatures of wondrous and terrible diversity. So, as you may know by the lore, the Naru are quite literally shards of light, that is exactly why they look like shards of light. It is almost certain that some of these have hit Azeroth in the ancient past, I would be surprised if they didn't, and that is what actually sparked life on Azeroth. Keep in mind, the Earthen were sent to examine a fissure, which essentially means a whole cracked Earth, which is exactly what would happen when a gigantic shard would strike the Earth. The Titans, as a predatory force, just wanted to hide this center Earthen, and when they got there, they probably figured out what was really going on. Most people have identified the look of this to match very closely with all the narrow architecture as well as all their spaceships. Other than this being a primordial shard of the creation of the universe, it could also be a place where the light had invaded in the ancient past. Maybe before the Titan Order, the light attempted to break the Black Empire as the Void, as you may know, is also their main enemy and they failed. And then the Titans, as they saved Azeroth, they wanted to appear as 
the only good guys in the universe, so they kind of hit it. This honestly makes sense. Like, why would the light never attempt anything on Azeroth? I mean, we had literally seen them invading Shadowlands. They probably know how important Azeroth is, so I definitely wouldn't be surprised if they tried to invade it in some ancient past and the Titan history just hid all that stuff. Nonetheless, the plot thickens. So, as you might have seen from the trailer, these cool Tyrant light humans living here, and we got an explanation from Blizzard on who they are exactly. Long story short, this is an Aratian expedition that reached this place that has lived here for a really long time. It is noted that they're fairly recent arrivals when compared to the Earthen, but they have been living here for who knows how long, probably hundreds of years. Arati is the original human nation, pretty much all humans are their descendants. This nation was specifically built around this crystal, and I would go on a limb here and say that this is probably what had brought them into this place. Remember, humans are one of the original worshippers of the light on Azeroth, in fact, the first ones as far as we know. The only explanation why they would venture so far from the northern eastern kingdoms to this place is that they were drawn in by this ancient force and probably these more fanatical light worshippers plan to do something here. Now, as I said, this light crystal is super interesting. This entire continent is much more than an island. It isn't just boring four new zones, new discovered island. But in fact, all these places are actually in layers. And this is a fully underground zone. But the light crystal is making it so much different that even the plants are accustomed to it like it is the sun. However, dark things have happened as it very recently started turning into a being of the void. It always comes back to the light, but Blizzard hinted it at some point it might not actually reverse. For everyone that has played WoW for a while, you might know that this is pretty much the exact nature of the Naru. They are beings of pure light that can turn into the beings of the pure void. This fissure is literally said to be the chamber from where you can reach the world soul of Azeroth. If Azeroth is getting corrupted by the void, it makes sense that this would also transform into the void, this crystal, which would honestly turn it into a super amazing asset for Zalatat when you really think about her plan. Also ties in Perfectly, the Nerubians are attacking and destroying these humans, the Light Worshippers, and the Nerubians are brand new allies of Zelata that she made a pact with. These guys could be the children of the First Flesh that we had heard about, even now the children of the First Flesh gather. There is definitely some type of a reason these Nerubians live right behind the wall of the world soul of Azeroth. Even more interesting, this could explain a Light Invasion as this was literally flung right next to the core of Azeroth probably attempting to completely destroy the world soul. It could realistically explain Sargeras' stab as he might have just goofed around the mist as Silithus is really not that far from this place where he was actually supposed to strike. Of course, we still got so much for information that is going to come out, but it looks like it is going to be really interesting next few years for World of Warcraft. Don't forget to check out the Gadget Discovery Club with my link in the description below. Thank you for watching, check out the original WoW expansion that was replaced by TBC and cancelled by clicking on the screen, and also check out my video on ancient Greek colonies in Spain by also clicking on the screen as well. See you next time!